Hello and welcome to yet another part of the character modeling tutorial and we're going to continue our face. So next part that I want to work on is uh, the eye. So we'll just uh, use one of the vertices we have here and copy it and trace outlines again. Um, something like this should do and yeah close the loop you know, F to connect things. Um, by the way, ju just saying in case you have troubles finding some of the tools, uh, there is a great Blender wiki uh, always there to look up things. Um, yeah, basically I'm saying this because of all the questions uh, on my last video. Most of them were related to, you know, things like how do I connect uh, this final part with the eyes or, I don't know, things like that. So I guess if you want to, um, you know, find out for yourself what it is, which I think is a good idea because you learn maybe better like that, or I feel that that's good, um, give it a try and just figure out what the name of the tool could be and look it up there. It's always a good a place to look for information. Um, let's at this point add subdivision surface modifier to our model uh, just so that we can keep track of the volumes and how they're behaving and such. Um, okay, sorry for that. <laughs> so yeah, just the eyes, and again, we have troubles with um, them aligning properly. And this eye is definitely too, what do you say, wide. And it looks a bit like her face is almost a little bit turned towards the viewer. Um, we will not um, do the same in our 3D version. We'll keep with our, uh, stay with our, um, a rather flat part because in 3D you have to really define things even more than when you draw. I mean when you draw you can do sketches and it looks quickly good but uh, in the end of a, of a good drawing you have to finalize everything and it has to become a solid line. I mean it doesn't have to but you know if you, if you in a specific um, field you have to finish with a clean drawing and in 3D it's even extremer, if you know what I mean. Now, anyways, we um, have now all the outlines that we need. Uh, based on those, we will now start to work on uh, it. I'm just moving the eyes a bit more further to the front, but now it's okay. Um, let's start to connect things now. I'm going to start by extruding the eye, make sure not to be in proportional editing mode. and do something like that. Now with uh, control N you can recalculate normals. Um, don't forget to do that if you have troubles with the shading. That's also an issue that came up quite often. Um, and selections and F of course to fill things. Uh, you can also set it to smooth and by the way I think the normals are, are incorrect so I did the same thing that I mentioned again and you see it's fixed now. Now as for this part here we we will do several things I mean we are going to try to um, use um, some kind of topology in this phase but really nothing to um, too great for basically the reason that we're trying to achieve a certain look and everything that brings us to that goal is good you know we we we're not doing this for any company or some someone who tells us how we have to model it um, so basically we have all the freedom to do whatever we like to do and that's why I like to um, or I decided for this video at least that I would not, um, yeah, say too much about this matter because I think that it can really, at some point, 
keep you from, especially in this field of um, stylized faces, it can really keep you from achieving more satisfying results. And especially in my last test with uh, those facial expressions that I did, I completely um, disobeyed the rules of topology, you could say, but it turned out much better than all my other tests before. So I guess it can't be too bad. And, and of course, we animated it or applied facial, you know, deformations and we had no problems. So those, those um, reasons why you'd normally have good topology on a face seem to apply in different ways here. So you see I'm really just trying to fill areas here and mm, yeah, get the shape right, which is much more important. Uh, in the, of course, once we um, do that well, we can of course go back and, and see whether the structure can make our mold better. But our main goal is to get the structure, uh, to get the shape right, sorry. So you see, filling things here can be really easy and a fast thing to do. And also you can see that because we had this edge so much in the front, it really um, forces us to create these large cheeks that really change the look of the character and make it look more like, um, yeah, this style in 3D. Um, now the mouth will be also a bit interesting. Uh, I guess we're going to start with it right now and leave the, 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 this hole here to bridge later. Um, now what you want to do for the mouth is pretty simple actually. Um, let's start with, make sure the clipping is off so that you can move it outwards. So I ex extruded this outward by the way. And then you can activate clipping again. and. Basically, well, just with these, with this edge, uh, the mouth, and here on this end, I guess we'll connect those. But before that, let's rip these two apart with uh, V. So now that that's done, you can just select these four and connect them. So that's the first step to it, and then you select this loop. Let's quickly create. Uh, the insides of the mouth. So you want to have um, the lips touch. So um, you select these and kind of reverse them so that be careful with the selection though, so that you make sure that they really pass through each other and then you undo that again. So select only the upper ones and move them through the lower lip or I know I get confused as well at this point. Um, just make sure that at some point these go through each other and go back out again so that they really touch. And now from here on that's basically where you will mold the insides of the mouth. Um, let's see what should we do. I guess we'll go for that quickly as well. So. I'm just scaling it up a little bit and maybe we went in a bit too far and from here on once you have a result similar to this all you do is extrude it, scale it up, um, maybe we'll adjust the shape of the of this inner part and afterwards we just have to extrude it backwards and you know fill, fill the end everything else will be inside here and it's not really detailed with these kind of characters anyway so nothing too much to worry about like that and recalculate normals since we had some problems with that now this looks quite horrible while working on it so let's uh, hide that in edit mode so what I'm going to do is uh, select the loop here and then use Control E to go to Edge, um, edge Features and select Loop in a Region. Oh, it's okay. It's the wrong one. So I guess that doesn't do much for us. Uh, let's see if the other one works. 
What was it? Oh, that's the wrong one. Oh, okay, you know what? Just never mind. Uh, that works normally, but it depends on which side that you're selecting is larger, which has more vertices. You can easily select it like this as well, so no problem. Then with H, hide it. Uh, maybe it was one loop too much since we need to see the front properly because we have to adjust that later. Uh, okay, so that's the mouth for now. Um, we'll work our way around and shape it properly now. Um, let's see, how much do we do in this part? I think that's enough for now. I mean, this is an awkward moment to stop, but <laughs> you see we have done quite a bit already. So let's leave it as it is here with this weird mouth and this look. Uh, anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot from it. And I'll see you again in the next part. Uh, until then, have a good day and bye.